There, uh, we hope you're doing well. Uh, we've been working through 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We come to verse 4 now, and this is a description of love, which starts in verse 4. And this is our fourth of the uh, descriptors that Paul uses for what love does, how it acts, how it behaves. These are not describing what love is, but what love does in the heart and how it behaves uh, when it's functionally working in the heart. And so Paul has described a number of different things for us, and now we come to the next one, the fourth one, which is it is not arrogant. Love is not arrogant. Now that word arrogant there is the word that uh, is used several times in 1 Corinthians and all throughout, all throughout the New Testament. And what it literally means is to puff something up, to blow something up like a balloon. And that's the word that Paul uses here to describe arrogance. Now when we think about arrogance, we think about pride, someone who's, uh, who's sort of haughty. And Paul's picture here, in fact, the Greek language's picture here is of a balloon that's filled up in no substance, just air, right? And air, big in air, right? Um, that's all that's there. There's no actual substance to it. Now, when you think about a balloon, obviously it's, it's, it's puffed up. And Paul says love isn't puffed up about itself. It doesn't uh, blow itself. It doesn't have a big head about itself. Now, when we love somebody, Paul says that, we, that when we're loving somebody, we're not thinking about ourselves. We're not puffed up about our own selves. We're not arrogant about our own abilities or gifts. When we love someone, or that feeling of, of, of positivity is not directed toward ourselves, it's directed toward others. Now, again, as we go through these, we've been considering what it means to love others in the same that we love ourselves. If we're loving ourselves, we're going to be puffed up about our gifts, our abilities, our strengths. If we're loving others, we're going to have that feeling of positivity and encouragement toward that person, uh, pointing out their abilities and gifts, strengths. Okay, so what does it look like to be puffed up about ourselves, to love ourselves? Well, we know this, right? Uh, it's being egotistical, uh, being convinced that we that we know everything, that we're generally right, right? Being certain of our own opinions, being quick to judge other people's opinions and critical of what they may or may not think at various moments. We're not willing to listen to other people's ideas. Uh, we're consistently critiquing other people, what they have to say, because we're comparing them to ourselves and we're thinking to ourselves, well, I'm right, right? I'm puffed up. I'm, I'm, I'm wise. I know what's best. I'm proud and arrogant. I know what's best about the situation that we're looking at, right? We're, uh, a puffed up person is generally angry when they get crossed. And uh, when, when someone crosses their will, they're usually unwilling to admit when they've made mistakes, when they've had error. Uh, in other words, uh, we might, you might, might have heard the phrase, you believe your own press, right? You write your own news story and you believe it. And that's the picture of a puffed up person who loves themselves. But what does it look like when we love another person? When we're not puffed up in ourselves, we're, we're directing that sense of positivity and encouragement toward another person. Well, a, per, a person who's loving other people and not themselves, they're going to they're gonna be humble, they're going to be self-effacing, right? They're willing to listen. They might even actually go and seek out counsel from other people in order to get other opinions, in order to evaluate their own hearts because they know that they may be making mistakes. They may not have everything right, and they're loving those other people and hearing from them, listening to them and their struggles. Uh, love also, if it's not puffed up, right? It only has strong confidence where the scriptures speak clearly. It's not a love with love for other people. If you can correct a person in love and not be arrogant, but you only do that when it comes to issues that are clear and defined in the word of God. Uh, where other opinions are contrary to their own opinion, uh, a person who loves is willing to listen, to seek counsel, to seek advice, to have an open ear and an open heart to what it is that the other person is saying. Love also is usually calm when it's crossed. If you're not puffed up, it's not. It's very hard to poke you, right? It's not going to bother you uh, when you're crossed or when a change of course is made evident. Also, a, a person who loves other people, they're not believing their own, their own hype, right? Their own news. Uh, they're, they're caring for other people and they're having that same uh, desire to point that feeling toward those per that person, another person. So, if we're arrogant, we're puffed up like a balloon, we can't love other people. We're so full of ourselves in that sense that it's impossible to be about other people. But a person who truly loves someone else, they're not thinking about themselves, they're not puffed up, what are they doing? They're pointing that affection, that care, that energy, that encouragement toward other people, directing it in their way. Well, I hope that's encouraging to you. I know these things can be very convicting because all of us struggle with this, right? Every single person struggles with arrogance, with being puffed up. But we remember that Jesus died for our sins and he forgives us for that pride. It humbles us to the dust. Martin Lloyd-Jones said the best place to fight pride is at the foot of the cross because no one can be proud when they look up and see the Savior who had to bleed and die for them. 
I hope as you think about these things, you find yourself convicted that you're really not loving the way that you should, and you find yourself repenting and seeking God's forgiveness. That's what we need, and he offers it freely to sinners like us. Thanks for listening.